So at this point, I've got all of the uh, common ICs actually plugged down into the board. The rarer stuff, uh, I've gone ahead and not plugged in at this point. It's still in the uh, dissipative uh, foam there. I'm fumbling around here a bit looking for my glasses. It's like all you do in life is look for glasses. So everything that's on the board here is just pretty much jelly bean TTL. There's an op amp. Uh, there's one part with a date code of 7722 that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, and the question now becomes can I get the power splice plugged in? It's turned off. They plug in with the blacks to the inside. And there goes the fan. So the fan has come up, so the power supply did require a load before it would start running. So with this we can actually check a few voltages. First thing I'll hit is 5 volts across the TTL device. 5.24, a little bit high. Of course it's not under full load here. Um, take a look at one of the floppy supplies. There's the 5.2 again, as I would have expected, and this should be 12. 11.6, a little bit out. And someplace we've got a minus 5. So P5. So the orange. So from here to here should get me a minus 5 rail. And it does. Uh, the voltages are not greatly in spec, but they're there. Uh, so I've got the core three power supplies are there. Supply has come up. The fan is turning. The power supply was surprisingly clean inside. Uh, I guess the next step here is to uh, put the other chips in and just kind of put parts in and see if we can get this thing to the point where it actually uh, generates a display. So I've got the rest of the uh, components in the sockets. I've got a PC speaker hooked up. I have really no idea what to expect at this point. Will it give me beeps if there's no keyboard found or anything? I have no idea how sophisticated this BIOS is or isn't. All I heard was the speaker click. Check the power supply rails one more time. Yeah, 5.1, so under load it's come down. Minus 4.9 with load, the uh, minus 5 rail is acting more reasonable. And the plus 12 is at 11.93. So yeah, the power supply has come well into spec. I guess the next step now is a video card and keyboard. And I guess we go from there. Okay. Uh, about the noise here. So here's where we're at. This is a VGA card that I used in another 8-bit uh, ISA machine that I know will run in an 8-bit ISA slot. Uh, the additional tab on it here is just taped off. It's in the board. I've got the power supply hooked up. We don't have a keyboard on yet, but I've got a monitor if I can get the camera up where you can see the monitor. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll power this up the first time together and see what happens. Uh, oh, okay, that's a good sign. Excellent. Excellent. That's perfect. So, I don't know if you, if I caught that all on camera or not, but we'll do it again. It actually just came up and ran. Uh, first time. It's beautiful. So, VGA BIOS installs. It tests 64K of RAM, 88 CPU, no ROM basic booting from disk, and of course there's no disk controller on at the moment. So I'm going to put the diagnostic ROM in it and play with that. So I've pulled the anonymous BIOS ROM out. I've got the little adapter here that adapts an EEPROM uh, to that pinout, and I'm going to go ahead and plug it in in place. And this has got that I think landmark or whatever that diagnostic software was. Put video card back in. 
I'll swing us back up here to the VGA monitor. And of course, you're getting to see what a mess the lab is, and let's see what it does. Oh, I know what's going on. Poop. The uh, diagnostic ROM only works with CGA uh, and monochrome. It doesn't work with VGA, so this is kind of a bust at the moment. We know the PC speaker works. Uh, I have forgotten, and of course my monochrome monitor is in storage. So that doesn't do us much good. Uh, well, crud. I had high hopes for that. Totally forgot. Reason I picked up that monochrome uh, monitor was specifically to test this board. I guess it shouldn't have went into storage the other day. So I'll put the uh, BIOS ROM back in. I do have a floppy controller card floating around here. And I've got a floppy drive. I guess I can just keep chugging away here and get this thing put together. Uh, I do believe I've got an 8-bit floppy controller in the mix here. i uh, got no... Oh, it's a serial adapter. There's a 16-bit floppy adapter. I don't know if it'll actually work or not. Another VGA card. Another VGA card. Another floppy controller. Uh, again, it'll probably work in an 8-bit bus, even though it's a 16-bit card. It's a serial card. That's a hard drive controller. And two M MGA card. Oh yeah, that's a processor card. So. I guess the thing to try here is we will start with this floppy controller card first. JP1. Let's see if I can figure out what this does. JP1 to JP4. JP1 enable floppy, enable IDE. So I'm going to assume that that will disable the IDE. Of course, I'm going to have to get a floppy drive and find a floppy cable. Uh, those will be interesting to dig up. I know I've got them buried here someplace. Well, I'm just curious at this point to uh, watch it come up again just for the heck of it. Yep, VGA BIOS. Well, next step is more hardware. So here's the setup. I've got a couple of five and a quarter inch floppy drives back here. A floppy controller that I believe will work in an 8-bit bus. A VGA card we know is working in an 8-bit bus. There's a PC keyboard hooked up to the system. Uh, and as crappy as I think it is, I actually have DOS 4.0 here. I found a box set for a buck. So I couldn't pass it up just to give me some media to try to boot this thing with. I don't know if DOS will run in 64K RAM. Uh, I'm doubting it, honestly. There's an install, select operating 1, 2, and 3. Well, we'll see what one of these disks does. So. That drive with the twist should be drive zero. Get the view up here onto the monitor. Now the floppy light is on. Insert boot in drive A, press a key. 
So either floppy controller or it's not a bootable disk. It's possible as well. There was a setup floppy in the set. I'm not hearing the head step, which makes me think this drive is unhappy. Uh, select install. Yeah, I'm not hearing the heads do anything on that drive. So I will swap it. Now this floppy cable is highly suspect. As I harvested the uh, strain reliefs off of it for a different project and I haven't found the uh, floppy cable yet I bought for this project. I actually found a new old stock one here I had and the uh, connectors were put on incorrectly on it. So whoever built that one reversed one of the connectors. And I don't hear head stepping. This could mean all kinds of things. Um, this could be as simple as I don't have enough RAM to actually boot. The fact that I don't hear the head stepping is troubling. So, well, I'll go look for another floppy cable. Okay, I found a floppy cable. Oh, snag a microphone cable. Found a floppy cable that actually looks intact. Not that I expect it to make a difference. any of these are bootable. The setup disk must be bootable. I mean, nothing else would make sense. It must be bootable. Acting like it did before, there's no head stepping on the floppy drives. dig for the other floppy controller and swap the floppy controller out. Uh, this has got a floppy controller on it. And pin one goes this way. Got a whole sea of jumpers and no manual for the jumpers, so I'm just going to leave them the way they are. And we'll give that a shot. Well, that's not a good sign. Floppy controller plugged in, it didn't even power up. Try it again. Nope, power supply starts to come up and then immediately kicks out with that controller in. Is it an issue with the slot I'm in? Nope. So there's some issue with this floppy controller. That doesn't help. I think I have another floppy controller buried in here. Which I don't. So, at a bit of an Im impasse here. I don't know if it's floppy drives, uh, media isn't bootable, not enough RAM in the system, etc, etc, etc. So, I guess I will do some reading and keep playing. And we'll be back. <laughs>